Well, hello, welcome to the uh, last morning session of 2022 Filecoin Plus Notary Governance Meeting. I'd like to thank you guys for coming. Looks like we have about 15 or 16 people live on the line. And we're gonna walk through uh, a lot of new information today. And we have a lot of time on this call for any kind of questions and discussions for those of you that are joining us. So at a very high level, this is a little bit of a modified agenda than what we typically run with. And that was done to purposely give a lot of time so that we could really dive into the election process and really kind of walk through this and how it unfolded, introduce some of the new notaries that are on the call, and then make time for any kind of community discussions. So on this call, we will not be covering any new proposals. There was none that came in, so we're going to close out the ones from 2022 pending any async feedback. And we're also going to do all of the LDN review processes async. So one came through. I'll make sure to elevate that one so that you can properly get your message out. So with that, we're gonna spend a lot of our time on the election process, kind of how it unfolds, introduce you to like where to see the information on the new notaries and uh, focus on that. So with that being said, just a friendly hello from your notary governance team. We make up all aspects to make sure that this program runs safe and effective and kind of has a POC for any kind of specific needs you may have. So if you're watching this video or if you're brand new as a newly selected notary, these are the individuals that can support you in any issues that you have. A friendly request, rather than hitting up every one of us for a specific request that you have, your request will go faster if you specifically target it to us. If you make a mistake, no worries at all. We'll happily route you to the right POC. But what I mean is if you tag me on an LDN application, all I'm gonna do is respectfully point you to the POC that handles that. So if you can route that, it'll make it a lot faster for you. Those of you joining, we have updated our SLA for the coming year. We're not gonna enforce it in this second round. But what we're asking is that everybody that is a notary, that is a third, fourth round, that is committed to the SLA participation, to take just a quick moment on your call and rename yourself so that we can see you effectively and know who you are on this call. And to do that, just click on the three dots on the upper right, and then you'll see the name of yourself. And you can rename yourself to have your name followed by the organization. I feel like as I screen share right now, I might be a bad example because I can't click on my name without stopping it. Yeah, I can't actually, I'll just do it right now. So three dots on my name. And then what I'm gonna do is just change my rename so that it can says Kevin, and now it says Filecoin Foundation. This will make it one, a lot easier for us to communicate you if you're on a phone or you're an individual. And also when we're coming back to the SLA, which we'll talk about much more detail on this call, we're gonna have a little bit more of a check and balances than just the error table. So we'll be coming back to these calls and verifying the names. And this will hold true for anybody with an elevated SLA as a principal. So again, take a few minutes, click on your name, rename it so that everyone can see the organization that you represent. And that just adds to the transparency as we communicate as one big community versus just a collection of individuals. For those of you that are on the notaries and you're participating here, I'm going to share this link right now in chat. And with this, you can use this to sign up for one last round of this before we update this form in 2023. But we use this Airtable, as always, to gather participation, not just from the notaries, but from the engaged community. And I'll come back to this a little bit later on the call when it comes to scoring. So again, even if you're not a notary and you are dialing in as maybe an interesting community member or somebody who's interested in the program, this has weight if you sign in and participate in future elections and how we communicate with you. So please take the time to fill out this form. We'll use this for your engagement and community and participation. And it's right there in the chat link as we go through. All right, here's what I plan to cover for us as far as the notary elections. Just as a quick high level, I might talk a little bit, probably about 10 to 15 minutes. If you have questions, the best way to do it is post it into chat. And then I have a designated time call out specifically for questions and discussions where I can circle back. So rather than stopping and going through individual questions, what I'm going to propose is that I just give you a very high level summary of how the election process went, how scoring went, how the new applications were totaled by region, and then we will have a specific time for questions. And to take them in order, we'll just do the same process as always. We'll designate for the chat first for anybody who left a question. 
And then if you also have a question on the line, if you can just click a hand and the Zoom feature, we'll call on you in the order that those hands were raised. That sounds good. Well, let's dive into it. So this was the biggest round by far for the notary election. So very, very impressive applications that received. We received 129 applications. And the way that we did this is we took those 129 applications and we sorted and grouped them by geographic regions, Europe, GCN, North America, Greater China, Africa, Oceania, and South America. We had no applications come through for South America and we had one application come through from Africa this year. So what we did was we took these numbers that we proposed in the third round and we carried them forward to give each region an ideal mean distribution. And the purpose of this was to have each region have a relatively weighted say in the program. What we were looking for is to not have an outsized viewpoint and an outsized standing that just came from one localized group. So once we had these 129 applications sorted by region, then we began looking at the scoring process for each of those applications. Once we had each application, we went through and with those weighted regions by score, 90 new notaries were selected. So congratulations to you new notaries. We've sent you all a ping in your GitHub applications. You should see the information there. And then we'll talk a little bit about any application that wasn't selected as far as next steps and best practices. But those 90 new notaries now culminate the total of Phil Plus notaries as a whole. And this 90 total will merge this half with the existing third round, second round, and first round to really take a look at how much data cap is remaining, which notaries are by region, and which notaries have committed to specific SLAs. But for this fourth round, this combination of 90 includes some, some third round who have reapplied, as well as brand new notaries to the program. Now, taking a look at how that regional distribution plays out, coming back to that first slide on that weighted distribution, what we looked at was how many applications we received by that region, and then how that region had a weighted representation in the Phil Plus Notary Governance Program. So if you can look at this graph that I have on the screen now, this shows how that weighted breakdown was received and which scores were taken by a region and which scores were asked to reparticipate in a future round and strengthen their scores. There might have been times, and I'll talk about this in more detail as we go through, that in a region, there might be a group that all scored very similar. And so we'll talk about on the call for similar scores, how we looked at essentially tiebreakers based off past performance and weight in terms to give each region an equal say in the program. So you can see the breakdown now corresponds with the weighted averages that we've outlined in the third notary election with Africa representing the very small group. And then we have a breakdown for North America, that's percentage rate. And then you can see the acceptance rates versus the no rates based off these distributions that we carry for weight. So this is what carries forward on the score and how we looked at each region for their individual scores in order to determine who was selected in this notary process. Now, as I mentioned with scoring, there would be times that two applications or three applications or four applications all have the same basic score at the end and they all represented the same geographic region. And the event that an application had a similar score as somebody else, what we looked at after that was what was that applicant's past performance in terms of their existing SLA and in terms of their existing organizational contributions to the program, which are already represented in the questions. So what we did is we said, okay, are these applicants already participating in the working groups? Are they already participating in the trust and transparency? Are they already participating in the EFIL plus working group? And as you can see by this graph breakdown, whenever those two scores were selected and we took into account their working group participation, that would count towards their SLA factor as we looked at it. So in the event of like a tie or a score where identical applications were sent, we use this as a verification marker on that past contribution field that they filled out. We did the same thing with the notary governance call participation. As you can see by this scatter plot, every time somebody attends a notary governance call and fills out that error table for their participation, we're able to then track their community participation in the program. 
So again, looking at scoring, if somebody had said like, hey, I'm part of this, I'm already doing these things, I've contributed in these ways, and they were identical as far as their score, this was a way that we could look at that mean distribution by region and say who's come to which calls at which times, and those community members that have been engaged in the program were given added weight for their SLA to make sure that we were keeping this fair and balanced in a very mathematical way for those that are already participating to show that participation on their score. In terms of verification, one of the lessons learned in the third round was that it gets really tricky to keep track and verify that an individual actually represents the organization that they're claiming to be. So in the third round, we actually had applicants that were not representative of the organizations that they claim to be. So one of the steps we took in this fourth round was to build in an initial line of verification to make sure that if you say you are with XYZ organization, that your email address, I have it blacked out here, is from that organization. And so this was an additional check and balance that we could weed out any applicant that either A, didn't take that additional step and might have a, a trust and transparency block on them, or B, didn't have ties to that organization so that we didn't advance them into the next round, take a spot from somebody that would have done this step, and then come back. So there were some scores that were not distributed because they had not completed this email verification, because they had not had ties to the organization that they claimed to be. So this was just one more of that component of the scoring to make sure that that was just completely transparent and that everyone was from the organizations that they claimed to be from. Now, in this process, there's a lot of feedback that we can do to make this more effective, more easy for you, and more transparent going forward. So we held an office hours on December 5th, where Phil and I were on the call, excuse me, I think it was the 8th, 7th. And what we did was we allowed any applicant who had questions or wanted to make sure their score was like in the highest ranking for their region and just really connect with us on a one-on-one -on -one to make sure that they were good to go, that there was no additional questions. We were on the line for about an hour. We fielded questions from around seven different applicants who came and just wanted to check on their score, see what they could do, see if there was any blocks. And we were able to help those seven make sure that their application was in the best possible place it could be. We're going to do the same thing as a retrospective on any applicants who may not have been selected. So if you're on this call and you were an applicant who was not selected for this fourth round and you have really specific questions like, hey, what, what specifically was in my application that gave me a score of two or three? What can I work on in the fifth round to make sure that I get that score to the highest place? What can I do to make sure that I'm really transparent with this communication going forward? We're going to have another one of these retrospective office hours. Now, this is completely optional. And this is only if you're an applicant that wants to discuss your score in great detail. We're going to do it in the same format as we did the pre-check, where we'll take everyone on the call, whoever joins. If you feel comfortable discussing that with everyone on the call, great. We'll make that a group session where we, everyone can benefit. If you like any private, like something sensitive or something you want to get into, just like before on the pre-call, we'll have a breakout room where Phil or myself will go into the breakout room with you and look at your application in private just to make sure that you can address any sensitive needs. So you'll see that calendar appointment coming up for the retrospective office hours if you have questions. It's going to take place December 16th Pacific time at 1800 and UTC on the 17th at 0200. In addition to this retrospective in the coming days, I'll be sending an email to everybody who filled out an application with just some feedback. How, what worked well in this process? What could we do to make this more effective? How much time did you spend? Did you feel that this really represented your organizations? What kind of additional questions would you like to see in the future that would help you portray yourself as a worthy candidate to advance the Phil Plus mission going forward? And we'll use those feedback forms in the fifth round of election to try to make this ever evolving process even more effective for you. So with this, what I'd like to do is kind of open the floor up now for anybody who's on the call that has any kind of questions about the process or wants to dive in. But just a friendly reminder, if you'd like to get into the very specifics of your application, what we may do is give you a general answer now and then invite you back to the office hours to discuss or if it's something that's better spoken async and writing, we'll be happy to open up a temporary channel 
Again, process is not perfect. You've got it as close to dialed as we possibly can, but always looking for feedback, thoughts, or discussions. So with that, I'm gonna mute my line, check Slack, and see if we can address any issues. But before I do, I know that we have Deep, Simon, and RG on the call. I'd like to give them an opportunity if they have any thoughts or input before we open it up to the general questions that may go. So Deep, RG, Simon, anything you'd like to add as it's process? I just wanted to address phase uh, topics in the chat real quick. Um, so is three the minimal score for a notary carry? I don't think so, right? It's just based on like the top in, in a region. So it's region specific. Is the score calculated with a floor, ceiling, or round? Great question. I think the final formula is a floor formula, Faye. Um, and then that also leads into your third question, which is decimal point, no decimal point. Uh, in the past, we used to use an unrounded score or like an unfloored score, basically. Uh, to break ties, but there were just so many more applicants this time, and so many of the scores were so similar that it wouldn't actually have helped. Uh, and so I think Kere and Phil sort of um, are proposing that we go a slightly more nuanced path this time around. Um, either way, I do think what we end up with is a little bit more of a wider selection of notaries and significantly more notaries. And so I'm personally quite excited by the outcome. And And from a meta standpoint, right, to see this program going from like, 10 notaries that we were working with about two plus years ago uh, to 120, 130 applications now with 90 people getting selected. Uh, it's a huge, it's a huge leap forward and it's a critical leap forward because notaries are in many ways the main throughput indicator of the system. And so I'm personally extremely excited for the set of notaries, both the existing ones that are already trained as well as the new ones. Uh, that are, are becoming notaries for the first time, along with much more robust support and tooling and some indication of performance and tracking. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll have a lot of learning in the first uh, several months of next year in terms of how we can continue to improve the process. Uh, so thanks so much for being a part of it. Really excited to see what we continue to learn. Thanks, Steve. Great questions, Faye. Thanks for asking that. I'll leave the mic uh, muted for a minute if anybody on the call has any kind of clarifying questions or wants to discuss anything on the scores in more detail. Happy to take the time. All right, if anything pops in your head later, feel free to just put it in chat. We have time at the end of the call again for any questions that may came up. I appreciate that. So after looking back on what's happened in the past for the scoring and what's taking place, let's now talk about next steps for notary onboarding. So what this process entails is, is quite a bit of work on our side to make sure that this is as seamless and smooth for any notaries that are new coming onto the process as well as third round, second round, and first round to continue to be effective and have the most up-to-date information. So let's take a look at some of the changes and let's take a look at some of the processes that go along with it. So first off, as a friendly reminder, if you are a newly selected notary, it is pretty much an expect expectation that you have ordered your ledger if you have not done so already. Consider this your last very friendly ping to do so. Failure to have your ledger order may result in shipping delays, which result in delays on your verification of the multi-sig, and it will result in delays in you being able to approve and verify the data. So consider this your very last friendly reminder, all new notaries on the call or watching this on YouTube, please order your ledger if you have not done so already. We recommend the Nano S Plus, but again, any physical ledger. And a question that comes up quite often is, do I need a physical ledger in order to participate in the notary? And the answer is yes, you must have this physical ledger in order to participate as a notary on that. A quick check-in on the SLAs. This was a big weighted part of the notary score. And this came from the third round findings is that we had really qualified notaries that were doing really amazing things in the program, but also had very limited bandwidth. 
So when it came time to approve applications or give their very valuable feedback on proposals to improve the program, they just didn't have the time available. So in the last round of elections on the third, we had asked for a time commitment based on hours, but that was so vague. Can someone spend eight hours reviewing one application? Well, technically, yes. So with this fourth round, we tried to make this as transparent as possible on like, what does those hours represent as far as contributions to the Phil Plus program as a notary? So I wanted to take some time here now that the new notaries have been selected and really kind of talk about these SLAs and the expectations of notaries going forward. So as you can see, it's broken into five categories. Category one is that you are just basically coming to the governance calls once a month. This lets you stay active, this lets you stay current, and this lets you stay aware of what's going on. And you're responding to any Slack messages that you may get within around five days. That five days is not gonna be like a timer that we set, but the expectation on this is like, if you get a ping on Slack for an action, you're seeing this within one working week to come forward. Looking at the applications that came through, we had a very, 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 very low number of notary applications that selected this, which made me really happy to see the participation was like elevated in the applicant pool. Number two is obviously escalating in responsibilities that you're coming to these calls, but then you're also voting on those proposals and you're joining a working group, which we'll talk about on the call as a refresher on what working groups are available and have more opportunities in the future. SLA three is we're introducing the concept of a notary leaderboard. And this is what Phil and I are working on, Phil mostly, to bring this to life, to actually give a ranking numerical score based off how many applications you're receiving, your participation in GitHub proposal, comments, thoughts, feedback, your participation on these calls coming through and participating, as well as like, how are you driving that data allocation? Then also coming to two governance calls, so maybe twice, as you come on the schedule. The L4s and L5s, I saw this to be the highest number of selection in the notaries that are coming on. These 90 selected notaries, I'd say the majority selected number four and five. So that's where I'm gonna spend the bulk of my time kind of outlining this. If you've signed on to be an L4 and L5 notary, kind of the expectation is that you're just very engaged in the community. So not only are you keeping like a top score on that leaderboard, not only are you coming to the governance calls, but you're responding to Slack really quickly or publicly. You guys that have been around for a while may see that we get a lot of questions in the Phil Plus channel that are broad and they come through at all hours of the day. The bulk of the governance team, we work in North America. So when we're asleep, some of the bulk of our notaries are in their work day. So it's really effective to have notaries serving as like a first line of like, hey, I've done this same thing. I can answer your question or here's where I found that information. So an L4 notary, the expectation is that you're very engaged on Slack. You're coming to these calls. You're actually updating your screen so we can see you on these calls and that you're really responding to those data app applications in the plus registry and signing those quickly and effectively as we work to onboard data in a much faster way. And then for anyone who's selected L5, we expect you to be just pretty much the leaders of the program. You're kind of signing up to take on the responsibility of saying, look, I'm gonna be in the top of the leaderboard. I'm signing that data, I'm coming to these things, and I'm really contributing to this program. And I'm gonna hang my hat on how well it does based off my participation. The also expectations for joining the L5s is that we're trying to drive this you know, community awareness of who we are and what we're doing. So right now looking at the call, I'd say the majority of us have our cameras off, which is just fine. But the L5 notaries going forward in 2023, the expectation is that for the majority of the call, obviously not 100%, you have your camera on. And then that's just a way that the community can see you and build that relationship. And that can kind of drive that you're part of this call. So going forward in 2023, one of the participation SLAs to get credit as an L5, if you claim to be an L5 on your application, is that when you're coming to these calls, your webcam is on, you're very active on Slack, and that you're really kind of driving your presence and your reputation tied to the Phil Plus program, which is what it's about. It's that reputational awareness and verification that makes this program a success. So just as a quick friendly reminder to the L5s, I'll be reaching out to you, just kind of making sure that you're understanding that, 
see if you have any tech blockers and make sure that it's good to go. So I'm gonna pause here and see if anybody has any questions and check in on the Slack threads that are going to see if there's anything I can clarify for the SLA. Linda, I see your hand up, floor is yours. Linda, again, I can see your hand if you have a question. Linda from Be Well. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I just silenced myself. <laughs> sorry. Uh, hi, Kevin. Uh, I have a question about the uh, level five particip participation. Uh, about the question is, response to Slack inquiries uh, can, can be someone from our team. Uh, as long as uh, our handler it will will be you know um labeled as our company, but maybe we we have uh, several colleagues from our team. Can anyone to response this inquiries be eligible? Linda, I appreciate that. It's such a good question. So here's how it works for the organizations. If you filed your application as an organization, yes, anybody who's been verified. And I'll get into that in more detail, verified, can respond on Slack. So this means if I'm familiar with your application, it was you and Aaron and maybe another person. That means that once you've all verified your token, and I'll talk about that token later on the call, and we've connected mm -hmm. that Slack address to your organization, that's great. So anybody from your organization that's been authenticated to represent you can speak on behalf of Be Well in those channels. And that's encouraged. And that's one of the benefits of having organizations join this. For an individual application, which we had some, only that individual will be authorized to represent themselves. So an individual can apply and then bring on seven of their friends to kind of like sign and act on their behalf. But for you, for anybody that was an organization, once you've verified with that token authentication that you represent, Yes, anybody from your organization verified can speak on their behalf. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. All right, see no other questions. I'll move right down into the token process. So good segue, Linda, thank you. In this application process, when we received your GitHub application, we then left a comment to please email notaryelections at phil.org, and we gave that email address a response. And with that response, we gave you a very custom token number that will be used to verify your identity going forward. So what this means is that we can now connect the owner of the GitHub account to the email of the organization that responded. Because we verified those email addresses indeed came from the addresses of the organization, we then ask that you send us a Slack message with that token code. What we're then able to do is search Slack for that token and verify that that Slack address is indeed connected to the organization. The reason for this additional step was one, tied to communication issues that we had in the past where we had individuals claiming to be from an organization which they did not represent. And the second is tied to a little bit of calm sanity. Sometimes in Slack, we might have an email address, or excuse me, a Slack address that is our name, but our email address is something different and our GitHub application is different. So this meant that in the past, if somebody had a question, it might not be possible to find them in Slack or it might not be possible to find their email because these were all distributed. With this one unique token, we're now able to verify that the person who holds the token can communicate effectively from that. So please don't share your individual token that Phil and I sent you. That's how we used to verify your organization. And if that is released, then we can't verify your organization and we'll have to start this process over for you. But if we do get future comms from an unknown Slack address claiming to be you, well, the first thing that we'll ask is we've never corresponded with this address before. Can you please verify the token tied to your application? So please keep that token private. That is your unique code to verify your authenticity for the Phil Plus program. Now, for any notary that's selected participating in SLA two through five, which I think is 100% of the new notaries, you are committing to joining the working groups. What's nice about these working groups is they're working in targeted problems to make the program better and more effective. 
The two largest ones that are operating right now are the Trust and Transparency Working Group led by RG and the Bill Plus Enterprise Working Group led by Kevin Z. So the time meetings for the Trust and Transparency take place on 8.30 and 7.30. They have their own Slack channel. If you're looking for the links, I've posted this deck in the Phil Plus public channel under my announcement for this call. So feel free to open up that Google PowerPoint presentation and you'll see the links here on how to join these or just join them there. And they have very two specific missions. So I'd recommend you join a working group that aligns with your own spikes and what your own interests are as you go forward. And as 2023 carries forward and we start to dive into more specific projects, we will kick off more specific working groups based off feedback from you and the governance team on how to make this program more effective. So right now there are two working groups. If you have signed up to be an SLA two to three to four to five, please join one of these now and please add the signups to carry forward. I see a hand came up. Kobe, I'm gonna turn the floor over to you for any questions you may have. Oh, uh, just for the, the, the token part, like when would that uh, gonna happen? Kobe, you would have received your token via email. So after you turned in your application in GitHub, we asked you to email. And I'm not familiar with yours specifically off the top of my head, but then you would have responded to that GitHub application with your company email. And then I would yeah, have responded uh, so, so, I mean, like, because, uh, like, I think uh, you, you mean the previous uh, GitHub, like, uh, response that you required to send the mail, right? This would have been the one that came through in late November, early December. So you would have got an email saying, thank you for verifying and had a token ID. Okay, let me check it out. Thank you so much. And what I'll do is if you have any problems or questions, feel free to DM me and then we'll start the process to verify that you are actually you and not just like my younger brother who's made his name, your name on this Zoom call. And that's the purpose of this token is to verify those individuals. So if you have any blocks or questions, feel free to DM me and I'll help you out. So I'll pause here on working groups. If anybody has any questions on how to join these, what their intentions are, or any kind of overall questions on the purpose of the working groups, now is a great time to ask. Fabulous. This kind of ties into the question that Kobe just asked as far as communication. New notaries, I highly recommend that you post any kind of general questions in the fill-plus Slack room. The reason for this is if you're asking the question, there's a very high likelihood that somebody else has the same question. DMs are always fine if it's personal, but DMs sometimes get messy, they get convoluted, and then they come in bulk, and then they're hard to respond to. So I always respond to DMs in a timely manner, but sometimes like this election period, when there are literally hundreds of DMs that come through, if you have an urgent issue, it may not reach my radar. So if you're looking for something that you'd urgently like answers to or a response, the best and most effective way is to plus fill plus channel that's in the Slack. You'll also take a look if you haven't noticed that we pin some of the most important documents, like how to join the working groups, the governance call times, that's all there in the channel. So that's the most effective way to get a hold. DMs are always fine and I will respond to them. But just as a quick note, sometimes during periods of peak busyness or outages for holidays, you may get a delay from me. So the most effective way to get on my radar super quickly and get help from the community is to utilize that public channel. So any notary that was selected here in this new fourth round will need to complete a disclosures form. And this comes down to international sanctions laws that we have to comply with at the foundation. This form must be completed by December 20th. This is the absolute hard deadline. And I will publish this here in the notary governance call, as well as to the verified Slack address that we haven't been received. Any application that has not verified their disclosure by the 20th in full will not be able to advance. So this is very important. Complete your disclosure form by the 20th. And this disclosure form was linked to your GitHub application. So in your application, it has the final comment on how to sign up and complete this form. As a note, and this is also very important, anybody who will act on behalf of your organization as a notary must complete this form individually. So Linda, for your example, where it might be you and one or two other people, 
each one of you that controls the ledger and will act as a notary on behalf of the organization must complete this form. So this means that if we see that there are four Slack accounts that are tied to your notary and that you verified the token, but only one has completed this form, I will send you a very friendly ping. But if you have not all four completed this by the 20th, it may result in your removal as a notary in this fourth round of election. So be very cognizant of this deadline. This form is to verify that the US complies with sanction restrictions laws before we make an initial deposit transfer. This form also must be completed in full. So if you fill this form out with just a first name or an icon, we cannot move forward. We will kick it back and we'll ask for that clarification. And again, we're going to be asking for anybody who controls that to sign up. And again, if there are multiple accounts that are now representing your organization that have not completed this disclosure, it will result in us having to remove you to protect ourselves from sanctions lists. So I'm going to pause. I already see a hand. Linda, would you like to ask any clarifying questions? I saw your hand come. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I, I had. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So about uh the full name, I have a question for the full name. Uh, like uh, yeah, I also saw the uh the form, and I saw uh it is request to write down my full name. Well, I have a question because like uh my handle name may be like Linda Lee, or my colleague is Aaron Hu. Uh, but our full name, I'm a full legal name, maybe different, especially for the given name part. So is that okay that we, like my full name is Jin Yin Lee, not Linda Lee. So in the form, I need to write down Jin Yin Lee rather than Linda Lee, is that correct? That's such a good point. Thank you for raising that. I wasn't even tracking it. For that specific use case, what I would recommend is put your full legal name in the top header. And there is a section at the bottom of the form for disclosures. I would recommend making a disclosure like my full legal name is this, but the name that I operate most, my common name is this. And what we're using is we check those names against the sanction list that we're known to operate and not operate with. So failure to disclose that full name will mean that you didn't disclose that, putting the foundation in jeopardy of review. So we asked that under disclosure would be the best place. So list both names, your first legal name in the top, and then your common name in the disclosure. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you, yes. Perfect question. Thank you for asking that. Nate, I see your hand up. The floor is yours. Okay, hello. Um, so I have like two questions. It's just a clarification about the disclosure form. So the first one is, um, so we all gonna use the same token um, ID, like the unique ID you sent us, even if it's so many people uh, filling out the form, as well as the notary address. Just want to make sure those two. Yeah, that's a great question. The answer is yes. So everyone from your organization will use the same token and everyone from your organization will use the same address. And then what we're going to do is we're going to link one, two, three, four, five people from your organization to that ledger address and to that token and to your full legal name. And that way we can verify who you are, who you represent in order to send you a token amount of fill for the transfer going forward. So great question. The answer is yes. Everyone should use the same token. Everyone should use the same address. Perfect. Thank you so much. Great. Right. And kind of rounding out the list is onboarding. So new notaries in the fourth election, what we're going to do for you is we're going to give you access, excuse me, to an onboarding document in Google Drive. What this document will be is a checklist that will get you started and it will say watch this video watch this powerpoint do this click through and the goal of this is to make the process async in the past third round what we did was we hosted live onboarding trainings where we screen shared where we asked questions we went through it live the downside to that was that if anybody fell behind or wasn't able to attend the call they had a real difficult time really getting a handle on the technology and they had a really difficult time of establishing like what does good look like and what does great look like and then what does not meeting expectations look like so phil and i are currently going to start working on this very specific onboarding document so a new notary can see when i am doing diligence on an application 
what does a application look like that is good, that is bad, that I should flag for questions? How do I raise those questions? How do I sign in an approved data cap? How do I flag issues with that? We're also going to have that onboarding guide translated. So those of you that are Mandarin speakers will be able to review that in that language. And that should hopefully make that process as easy to go through as possible. This is obviously a big lift on our part. So I'm saying in the coming days, I know that in the past we said this would kick off next week. I think that timeline may slip a little bit. So as far as the very specific onboarding, we will push this guidance out as soon as we have it ready and keep you updated in Slack once it's there. It will be a work at your own pace. So there won't be any timelines for it, but we will have a part of it where you send us a note like, hey, I've completed all this. I have no further questions. I feel good. Or, hey, I would like to ask some clarifying questions on how to do one specific process. So look for this onboarding documentation to come through you on Slack in the coming days or weeks. And I think our last update from the notary before we turn it over to Simon is that there will be no governance call on the 27th an observation of the holidays in North America and worldwide. So the next governance call will take place in 2023. If you're new to the program, I highly actually you need to add the governance call to your calendar. What this is, is a shared governance call that we can then post. So any updates or timelines you can see. And the reason we do this versus adding folks individually is that every time someone is added to the calendar, it sends a note of spam which we've gotten feedback in the past can be spamming. So to avoid that, we use this shared calendar. Also for the first kickoff date of 2023, I'll be putting a poll in the Phil Plus Notaries channel once I've added you to that, to collect feedback on the best day, being respectful of the Lunar New Year and any timelines coming up, we wanna make sure that we kick that time off at a time where it doesn't impact you and the most people can attend. So look at that first call of 2023 to come through on that shared calendar based off feedback of you that are participating. So as one last option, if you join the call late, you might not get access to the Airtable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repost that Airtable link right here again, one last time for you to go ahead and add any kind of your organization. We are gonna be heavily modifying this Airtable in 2023 to make it more effective for the SLAs to kind of give you a chance to give some more feedback on the proposals. So this will be the last time that we use their, this very specific error table. So with that, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Simon, who's gonna share some updates on the Phil Plus site. Simon, if you wanna share screen, let me know and I can stop and turn the floor over to you completely. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, thanks, K Ray. Um, hi everyone, uh, can everyone see my screen? Sounds yep. good. Great. Uh, so yeah, I just want to take a few minutes to share the new Phil Plus site that we've been working really hard on. Um, we worked closely with Agency Undone, an amazing group of talented people who really helped us bring this site to life, honestly, in under a month. So for this site, um, there was two main things that we really wanted to do. The first being to provide a central location for anyone to learn about Phil Plus. Um, so if you go scroll a little bit down on the landing page, you have a couple of quick questions that give you a background of Phil Plus. And so if you want to even learn a little bit more, you can go to the FAQ page where we're providing a couple more questions. Um, again, these are just a little bit of high level overview of what uh, Filecoin Plus is. And if you just want to learn a little bit more and get a deeper dive, you can actually click the here or the documentation and it'll bring you to the Filecoin and Phil Plus um, documentations. But the second thing being that any data owner can come to this site and apply for data cap. We have a unique like product feature right here with this toggle that someone can use and um, you can basically drag and left to right to for the amount of data cap that you want to apply for or if you don't want to use that, you can also just apply through just entering the amount, um, the amount of data cap. And so if you go click next, the application will be here as well. And so once you fill out all the application, um, all the questions on the application and set and click send request, this will actually um, open a new issue on GitHub. Um, 
I think from a lot of research that we've done, we wanted to provide a better user experience, just a smoother kind of experience because I think a lot of you may, might have seen that there's been a lot of back and forth going um, to just trigger the LDN applications. And so we've actually added more questions as well um, so that we can kind of make sure we can minimize that time in between the, uh, the governance team and the, the trust and transparency team and the notaries. And so hopefully this will help out. And so if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. Um, I'll also share the link in the chat, but this is kind of what we've been working on um, for the last few weeks. Uh, okay, Ray, I'll stop uh, sharing, but. That is really cool, Simon. That is really, really cool. Simon, is this, we share it right now in the chat, is this something that we could put in the Phil Plus channel so everyone can have access to this or is this still like review only for the folks that are participating in these governance calls? Um, I will put it in the Phil Plus chat in the future. Um, just give me a little bit of time and I think we just want to finalize everything, but it, it seemed it, everything should be good. Um, but just kind of wanted to show it in the last notary uh, governance call. All right, it's really hot. Thank you again for that. All right, with the remaining couple minutes on the line, I'd like to turn the floor over to anybody on the call for any issues they have outside of this agenda or any questions from the content that we've discussed. The floor is, floor is yours. Linda, I see your hand, the floor is yours. Yeah, Kevin. Uh... Oh, yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm question is that I saw the GitHub comments that you made is that the way uh, being well is selected, but when later in the announced list, is, is name list is announced or not? Because I saw you make comments um, in the GitHub, uh, in the Slack, that there's a list and check the list of the list. It seems it's not the newest uh, name list about the notaries, right? I don't think I fully understand the question. Can you reword that a little bit? I'll see if I can get you the best answer. Oh, sorry. I'm to make this simple. My question is: Is a new uh, notary list to be released yet or not? It is. So if I load GitHub right here, you can see the list in the notary governance repo, and right here under notaries is the list of all the current active notaries sorted by region. And we're gonna do a double oh. pass on this just to make sure that this includes all of the first and second rounds. But in this list, you should be able to scroll down and see your name. And that is that. And then it's also in your GitHub application where it posted as well. Yeah, that's question because I didn't see our name in this list. So that is why I ask. Thank you for flagging that. I think this just comes from a lot of new notaries to add to this and we just missed it. We will make a pass of this to make sure that this is a source of truth. So to apologize, that's just a fat finger typo on our part. But if your GitHub application has that answer that we put in there for be well, you'll see that you've been selected here in this fourth round to continue forward. So you're good to go and we'll fix that typo. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. That's my question. <laughs> Thanks for raising that. Deep, Simon, RG, do you have any closing thoughts before we uh, before we jump off the call today? Yeah, Kerry, is this the this is the last governance call for the calendar year, right? At this time slot. That is correct. This is the last governance call of twenty twenty two. Cool. That is. Then I think it's worth taking a second to just uh, wish people for the holidays uh, if they're celebrating this time of the year. 
I know not everybody is. I know some people will have holidays uh, in January as well with Lunar New Year and other holidays coming up. Um, but those of you that are taking time off, please get some rest. Uh, looking forward to having you back in calendar year 2023, stronger and rested and excited to get going. Those of you who are still working uh, through the next month or so, uh, good luck. Hope you have some focus time, uh, some time to, to concentrate and get done with what you want to before you do proceed to take some time off. Um, it's been a, a massive year, I think, for this program, like just milestone after milestone. And so really appreciate all the participation, the hard work that everybody's doing. Uh, it's, it's been epic to see. Uh, and the scale at which things are operating is, is higher than ever before. And we'll continue to be the way because of the, the strong work that we're doing to set ourselves up for success. So thank you once again to everybody and wish you the very best. Always well said, Deep. I don't think we topped that. Thank you, everybody, for joining the call, the last governance call in the morning session of 2022. There will be an afternoon session, of course. Wishing you all a very happy holidays if you celebrate it. Looking forward to talking to you on Slack. Thank you all for coming. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. M Merry Christmas to all of you. <laughs> all right. Well, good evening, good morning to everybody. This is the final call for the Notary Governance Meeting of 2022. If you're watching on YouTube, this is taking place at 1800 0200 UTC on the 17th on December 13th. So friendly hello to all the new faces that are on the call. Love seeing you guys. Uh, let's talk about what we have planned for tonight. So we are going to kick off with a little bit of a modified agenda for this governance call. And we have three big categories to kind of walk through as a community. The first will be talking about the notary elections, but that's gonna come after we kind of hover, how does participation work? We have a lot of new faces on the call. So we'll talk about how we kind of organize and structure this and make sure that everyone can communicate effectively. When we get into the notary elections, we'll talk a lot about how the scoring process works. We'll take a look at the notary breakdowns by region and how that took place. And then we'll give some time for any questions and discussions you may have about your application. And then we'll also open the floor up for any kind of next steps for you new notaries that have onboarded. And we'll walk you through what to expect and kind of give you some new talking points as we start to have process. Then we'll get into some free time for any kind of community discussions that you may have on the radar. But that will be precipitated by Simon, who will be walking us through one of our new dashboards that just launched today. So with that, what I'd like to ask is as we go through this call, if you have any questions, the best way to raise them is to use the chat bar. And if you list a chat there, Simon and myself will answer that as we go through. And if you have a question for the community as we go through this call, we'll stop regularly every couple of slides to give you a chance. If you just raise your hand, we have the screens up, we'll see you, we'll give you a floor to kind of ask any questions that you have. So with that, let's take a look at our governance team. So we are the team that makes up the governance for the Phil Plus program. We all have a very specific area of expertise. And this way we can kind of give you the best level of coverage. All we ask is that if you are going to ping us for an issue, it's really effective if you ping the person who's responsible for that issue. So what I mean by that is sometimes if you ping, say, Simon or I for an LDN application question, all we're going to pretty much do is route that through to Galen or route that back. So it's really effective if you ping us specifically for what you need. Obviously, if you don't know where the question goes, feel free to tag me and I'll be happy to step in and help you get what you need. So always here, ready to get your back. We are the governance team to kind of help out as we go. When you're on this call, it's really helpful to have your Zoom name match your organization. We'll talk about this in a lot more detail, but if you look at me right now, it just says Kevin under my name. You don't know which organization I represent. So if you have a question or I leave a comment, you might not know where it's coming from. If everyone would take a quick moment and just click on their name, you'll see three dots. And if you click rename, you can then add the notary organization that you represent or the organization that you're coming on behalf of. This makes it really easy. Again, if we get a question, we know where to route it after the call. Sometimes if we get a call and somebody asks a question and their name says iPhone, it's kind of impossible, obviously, to kind of route them to the best place or kind of keep tabs and making sure that we're keeping this facility running. So if you're a notary on the call, kindly ask that you put that. It just makes it a lot more effective. So thank you. And then as a friendly reminder, all of you new notaries that have signed up to be SLA 5, we'll talk about this in the call. 
But one of the things we're looking at from the five is having your webcam on just makes everything a little bit more engaging when you can see a couple of other faces. And a lot of this build program is built on relationships and trust and reputation. And it's just that little plus one to make that reputation more we can see each other. So only necessary if you signed up to be an SLA five. If you're joining this call, this is the link. I'm going to drop it in chat right now. We use this form as an Airtable sign up. What this allows us to do is track who's on the call, where they're coming from, who they're representing. So if you follow this link, it will take you to sign in. You'll put today's date. The session that we're at right now is the 060209 Beijing in the organization that you represent. We collect this every single call, every single week. And then we keep a tally on like who's coming to the calls, who's participating, and we'll talk about why that's important when we get into scoring as we go on. So that links in chat, please use that to fill out your form to just kind of mark for your SLA participation. It goes a long way. All right, let's jump into some of the agenda that we have on the timeline for tonight. First off is the notary elections. The way that we're going to kind of cover this is start out by talking about like a fourth round review kind of walk you through the notary process from a scoring perspective, kind of give you some insights into some of the metrics that we collected as we did this onboard scoring, and kind of talk about some of the steps that came into that process. If you have a question, it really works effectively if you put it in chat. And then after I give you a presentation about how we did the scoring, we'll have a dedicated time in about 10 minutes for any specific questions that you have. So with that, let's take a look. This was by far, hands down, our biggest election to date. So we had over 129 applications that have come through. And by context, I think in the third round, we had around 70. And then in the second round, we had around 30. And in the first round, we had around 10. So huge, monumental thank you for everyone who applied. What we did was we took all of the applications and we scored them based off what region those notaries were coming from. And we use the same metrics that we've outlined in the third election. I have the repo issue there, 479. And one of the intentions of using the regions is that when we have these LDN issues or when we have these big, big projects that you'll start to see more about, like say SEAL or some of these, when you have this enterprise level of data, we're going to be asking for notaries from five different regions to sign. So having a big, broad swath of very well-qualified notaries makes it a lot easier to facilitate those large data process onboarding. So that's kind of the thought process when we look at these applications that come in, why we distribute them and score them by a regional basis. And so that way we can represent the globe and the perspectives that everyone that comes from it. And we try to adhere to the basis of like, how do these numbers shake out? So every region can have like a footprint that relative to their size in the program. So of the applications that were received, we accepted 70%, which means that we have 90 new pending notaries coming on. This number is a little bit misleading with the 90 because there were some third rounds that reapplied. So I think our total number of notary count will probably be well over 100. But the applications that were specifically selected for this fourth round to renew and receive a re-up on data cap is 90 notaries, which is, again, a huge, huge monumental growth for this program of what we've seen over the last year. So again, thank you and props. The way that we looked at this scoring by region kind of ties back to that GitHub issue 479 that I shared. And what we did is we took each region and then we scored the applications just off the bat and then we put them in by region. So this meant that if somebody scored say a one, but they were only coming from the South America region, they would be the only notary representing that region. So then they would specifically get in. Some of the regions that had a very strong footprint, very competitive scores might come from a region where we received a lot of notary applications. So if you look at this bar chart here, you can kind of see the pending approval that's come through and just really what the distribution looks like of how it came through. And so a lot of really qualified applicants, we had to say, please reapply in the fifth round. And then a lot of the applicants you can see tie back to what that breakdown is by region scores as we come through. The way that we looked at a lot of the scores was not just based off their region, but what was that applicant's ability to continue to onboard data effectively and transparent. So if you remember in the application that fills out, we're looking for like organizational reputation in protocol security, things like have you participated in this program in the past? 
And then also what we looked at was, has the notary, or excuse me, this notary applicant been coming to meetings? Have they been participating in the working groups? So this was like one of the ways that we could wait if we had a very clean or equal distribution between existing notaries. This could be one of the factors that we looked at was, okay, is this notary actually part of a working group already? Have they been contributing to the ecosystem already? And so you can see from this breakdown, we had a large pool of applicants selected that already were part of the working group. And we pulled from that in order to kind of make this a little bit easier for those people to continue to participate. Same thing with participating on these notary governance calls. So if we had an application that scored very similar to another application by region, and there really was no way to kind of look at this, the best way that we could draw that metric in an entry of fairness was say, which notaries have been coming to some of these calls already as a community member or an engaged participant, and then kind of track that. So if you take a look at this scatter plot here, we pulled all the data for who's been signing this Airtable form. This is the Airtable form that I shared earlier in the call. And this Airtable form allows us to, again, see who's coming, who's commenting, and who's really active in the community. So if it came down to like a very equal rating on the scores and they were still part of the same regions, a really good indicator for us was, has this person been showing up already? And past performance as a future indicator was a really good way for us to make that decision. Look at this. We also added the step in this fourth round of election of having a verification process early on. So when we did the third round of elections, what we did is we waited until after the elections had completely finished. And then we came back and we added that, who are you, what organization, and verify that. And what we found was we had a large amount of fraud. And what had been happening was individuals had claimed to represent very prestigious organizations, but they had no credentials that tied them back. So someone would say, hey, I'm Kevin from Filecoin Foundation, but not have an email address that tied back to that. So thank you, everybody, for taking this additional step to verify your credentials, who you are, what, what organizations you verify with. This was a little bit of a tricky process for us to figure out. So we had to verify all of the tokens that were sent to you. I appreciate the patience as we got that figured out and corrected for some of you on the call. And now what we should have is that all of you that are notaries now have been through this initial vetting process where we've done that first round of diligence. And we'll talk about this on the call, what the next round of disclosures looks like for you, just to make sure that we're dealing with the right individuals and the right representation. So thank you for this round of verification. What we can now commit to is that your GitHub is connected to your email, is connected to the Slack. So all of the communications we've verified are the same and we don't have a man in the middle that's kind of taking the comms from you, as you say. So with that, I know that there were some questions. Phil and myself held an office hours on December 7th before the final deadline of the 11th. And we made this an open call. So any notary that was blocked, had an issue, might not have heard from us. We wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of take the time, dial into the call, ask us any questions, and we could get back to you and kind of like fine tune. We gave a lot of advice. Some people are on the call now. Hey, your application, this is why your score reflected this. This is our advice on maybe what to add or what you can do to maybe add supplemental information that would help bolster your claims that you're making as your participation or your reputation or whatever it may be. And so I'm really glad that some of you on the call took that opportunity. We've decided to do that again as a post-mortem after this election. So if you're on the call and you were not selected to participate in this fourth round of notary selection and you're curious, what can I do differently in the fifth round that would make my application stand out or be more effective? This is a great opportunity. And there's no problem with submitting your application early, like right now to get a jump on the fifth. We'll cold storage hold it in GitHub and when the next rounds kick off, we'll know that you're interested and we'll make sure that we're communicating with you early on the same way we did with some of the notaries that have done that. So this call, this post-mortem is completely optional. This is just if you have questions about your application. It could be if you were selected or not selected. And we're gonna make it just a general format, just the same format as office hours, which means we might have several people on the call. Whatever question you ask, it benefits those that are on the call. If you have anything private that you would like to discuss, Phil and myself will spin up a breakout room within Zoom. 
and then allow you to ask us any private or any sensitive questions that you might not want everyone to hear. So that's on the shared notary governance call. It's shared on the shared calendar for this governance call. And I'll share you that link if you don't have that already. And again, this is completely optional. The second thing that we're gonna be doing is sending out a feedback form to everybody who applied to be a notary in this fourth round, whether selected or not. And we're trying to collect signal, what worked really well in this process, what can we stand to improve in the next round? So all the notaries that sent us an email, look forward to that. We'll be sending that via an Airtable form and you could see that. So this is a great opportunity. What I'm gonna do is pause my mic. And if anybody has questions about the scoring or the election or anything having to do with the notary process as it stands right now, this is a great chance to either post it in chat or we'll get it back or raise your hand and we'll call on you as we go through. All right, I'm gonna take first crack at some of the text. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to stick a hand up and we'll get to you. I see from Blockmaker asks, will the feedback form be sent by email? Yes, it will. And this way we can verify that we're sending it specifically to the individuals that have applied and were confirmed. And the reason we're not posting this in GitHub is that in 2022, doesn't it feel like we have so many avenues of communication? So we are gonna to try to take that off your plate so you're not having to continually check GitHub for that. So you'll receive that feedback form via email. Thanks for asking that. Uh, hello, Kevin. Uh, I would like to remind you that there is an arrow in the time site in Google Calendar that actually our meeting is 10 o'clock, right? But the calendar shows that it, it is nine o'clock, I think. I appreciate so you, like you flagging remind? that. I'll take a look. I think we might have just okay. skid into the runway at the very end of the year. We're going to be completely redoing the calendar, but thank you so much. I'll make a note to check that and that that time zone will be represented going forward. Thanks for flagging that, Jeremy. Yeah, daylight saving times gets the best of me quite often. All right, well, again, if you have any specific questions on your application, please send you a friendly invite to join us on the office hours taking place on the 16th. And uh, we'll look forward to giving you any kind of clarification we can for that. So carrying on and respectful of your time, let's talk about next steps for the new onboarding for all of you new notaries. Thank you for coming. So first, number one, if you have not ordered a ledger, I cannot stress this enough. As soon as you hang up with this call, please do it. So what you'll need that ledger for is the verification and all the LDN and multi-sig signing that you're gonna be doing as a notary. We've had reports, some shipping delays are happening in greater China. So that means that if you delay until the last possible minute, this will cause complications. I've also been asked, what's the deadline to have this ledger in hand? There's no specific deadline. I won't, I won't hold you to that, but there are two big concerns that will happen if you don't have your ledger. Number one, we're gonna talk about it later on the call, is you have to complete a disclosure for sanctions. If you don't have that ledger, you won't have an address to complete that form, and we won't be able to finalize you into the onboarding, which means a lot of the processes that we're gonna be going over will just pass you by and you'll be playing catch up. The second is you'll be committing to SLA levels from your application. And so if you selected one of the higher SLAs with the leader notary board, notary leaderboard, right off the bat, you'll fall behind and you risk putting your organization in jeopardy. So again, if you haven't ordered your ledger, please get that in. If you have any complications, please flag it with myself and I'll be happy to kind of work with you one-on-one. -on -one. But again, friendly reminder, that ledger is gonna be really crucial for your success as you go forward. So let's talk about the SLAs. This was the first round where we actually had a defined SLA for what a great notary looks like. And this was a modification off the third round. So in the third round, we asked notaries essentially, how much time will you have to spend on the Phil Plus program? 
And a lot of applications would come back five hours a week, 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week. But what we saw was with those notaries, they weren't really signing a lot of data cap. They weren't really commenting on proposals. Maybe they came to a meeting or two, but they weren't really driving the mission forward. And remember, the mission is to onboard quality data onto Filecoin. So we kind of went back to the drawing board and revamped the process. And we talked a lot about this at Phil Lisbon. So essentially, when you submitted your application, you committed to like, how much will you be participating in the program? So I'd like to spend just a moment to refresh on this, and then we can kind of get into it as we talk, as we go through it. Okay. So cool. there are five levels in the mutual uh -huh. Lisa here. So essentially there's five levels in the notary process. So L1 is just the very basic. I looked over the applications again before this call, and I think we only have just a handful of notaries that selected this. And this is just the bare minimum. I'm coming to the calls. I'm going to check the, the repos and maybe vote on something once a month. And I'll be on Slack generally. The bulk of the notaries selected this category here, two, three, and four. So two is just a little bit of a modification. You're coming to the calls, you're commenting on the repos every so often, but you're also gonna be responsive and joining one of the working groups. And we'll talk about that and how to get involved later. And then number three, you're actually committing to like some hard numbers at this point. So we're working on the Filecoin leaderboard. And what this will do is it will integrate who's signing the data, how long they're taking to sign it, and who's actually participating in proposals and coming to this meeting. What this will do is almost like a video game, give every notary in the program a rank. Hey, this is the top notary based off the data that their quality bringing on, participating. And you can essentially see with reputational backing, who's really driving that forward. So at the L3 level, you start to commit to this. When you get into the principal leaders, which I think we have a lot of people on the call that have committed to at the four and five level, you're essentially saying, I'm gonna be one of the top members of this program when you let me in. So at the four, you're gonna maintain like a very top score on that leaderboard. Within that top percent of 10% range, you're coming to at least two notary governance calls a month and that you're in two working groups. Right now there's two working groups. In 2023, there's gonna be a lot more. So you can pick which working group aligns best and join it. When we talk about responsiveness on Slack, what that two days is pretty much saying, like, if somebody asks you a direct question, like, hey, we're missing this, or can you comment on this? In around two days, we could expect to hear back from you. That's a big jump. It's like, hey, you know, within a day or two of business, if you look at the L1, it's like a week. Let's say someone's going to check this once a week. When you're the L4, or L5, you're checking this, if not every day, every other day. So that's the expectations. And you're voting or commenting on the proposals for modification of the program and really making your voice heard on a way to try to improve it. Five is really just saying, I'm gonna be at the top. Like, I really wanna be at the head of this and I'll be on the top of the leaderboard. When you're coming to the calls, you will be on two of these a month and have your webcam turned on. The reason we ask for this is again, this program is built on reputational trust. So sometimes it's nice to have the cameras on and give just a sense of who you are to the community versus just text on a screen to start to build these relationships especially as we onboard more data in 2023 than we ever have before. This is giving you one of those critical aspects. So thank you to the L5s on the call right now that have your cams on. Just makes this a little bit more of an engaging environment as we go through it. So I'm going to pause and see if anybody has any questions on the SLA levels. And we'll talk a lot more about this in onboarding in the weeks to come. But any initial questions that you may have? Yeah, Young, I see your hand. Floor is yours. Okay, I got two questions. And uh, the question number one, uh, we applied uh, level, five, level five in our uh, uh, application form, but we got a score of four. So that makes us level, level four or level five as a notary. Yeah, really good question. So the way this works is if you said in your application, hey, I'm representing Store Swift, we commit to being an L5 notary, and you get your score that Galen posted in your GitHub repository, I think on December 11th, what that score is, it's a total of all the fields added and cumulative together. So that does not mean that your SLA drops down to a five, you're still committing to the five, and that's why you got that higher score of four. 
what that total score in your GitHub repo was all the fields added together and then divided to give you that total score of four. So to clarify, you're still a five for your SLA if you've committed to that. That score of four was just your entry into the program rated against all the other notaries in your region. Does that kind of make sense for you? Yes, okay. And uh, the question number two, and uh, so so we got a score of four. So how much data cap will be granted to us? 500 PB question. or 1 PB? Yeah, so we'll be distributing the data cap based off the allocated amounts that you've requested. I'll have to check in and see what the final numbers are that we're distributing. But essentially, your score does not weigh in to how much data cap you receive. So that means that if you scored a three, you won't receive a reduced amount of data cap based off what you've selected in that. So again, your score will have no implication on the amount of data cap that you receive. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Thanks. Good questions. Thank you for raising this. Thanks. You're muted. So in this process, we sent tokens to all of you. So the way the process worked is you submitted your GitHub application. We sent you a, hey, please email us at notary election form. You sent us an email from your organization. And from that email, we verified you truly represent the organization. Then we sent you a very unique token code specific to your organization. Then you then slacked us, either Phil and myself or myself or just Phil, and you gave us that token code. What we do this for is to verify that the person that we're talking with on Slack is the same person that verified their email, is the same person that actually filled out the application. And again, the reason we do this is if you look in Slack, everyone has a different username that might be different from their email. And their email might be different from their GitHub. And you can also log into Slack and make a username like President of America, and no one can tell the difference on who you really are. So we use these tokens to now verify. So you might see a communication from me if we start talking on Slack and it's a new thread. I might just ask you, hey, can you please just verify what your token code is? And then what I'll do is I'll save it to that Slack thread. And this is just that due diligence to make sure that I'm properly communicating with the organization that claims who they are. So please keep that token private. That token is personal to your organization. So if you share that, essentially what someone could do is come to us and say, yes, I am Kevin representing this organization. And here's my token code. And now I will assume that I am communicating with that person. So please keep these token codes protected and I might ask you from time to time, hey, what is the token code if it's not in our Slack threads again? If we are talking and we are working with someone from an organization that might have multiple people, if we start a new thread, I might go back to that thread and be like, hey, somebody from your organization says they're with you. Can you please have them verify what the token code is? So again, if you have me ask for that token code, that's the reason why. For communications, if you're new to the program and join it up, the best way to communicate is in the Phil Plus channel. I think all of us are worrying it right now. What's nice about this channel is there's roughly 2,000 members. If you look at the very top, we have some of the pinned locations. So if you're curious where to find a document, most times or not, we have it pinned there. We didn't want to overload it like a library. So it's just the most critical information that people seem to ask for the most. It's also the fastest way to get a hold of me. I'll be very candid. I think I have like 300 messages in Slack in the last three or four, five, six days. So if you send me a DM, it might get just stepped on with the barrage that's been happening during the election. So a really quick way to get a hold of me is just say, hey, Kev, I have a question about X, Y, Z. It could be in a comment or it can be in that Phil Plus channel. And because that bubbles up right away, I'll see it faster. This will obviously improve in the coming days once the election slows down. But again, that Phil Plus channel is great because everybody can see it. For those new notaries that are joining the organization, we have a private notary room in Slack that I'll add you to. And in that private room, that's a great quite place to ask like really specific questions rather than being 2,000 people. 
there's only, I think, going to be like, gosh, 150 of us. So again, that is a good way to kind of like get set up and you'll be admitted to that in the coming days once we kind of go through it. So I'll pause here and see if anybody has any questions about tokens or communication in Slack as we start to do this. Rock and roll. So working groups, those would apply to anybody who's an SLA two, three, four, five. Right now there are two working groups, Trust and Transparency, which is led by RG, and Enterprise Phil Plus, which is led by Kevin Z. The Trust and Transparency meets every 8.30 and 15.30, this is Pacific time, the opposite week of the governance calls. And what they look at is, are there questionable activities? Is somebody operating that they shouldn't be doing those things? They try to make this as transparent as possible and trying to make this a hardened network and free of fraud as we grow. So if that interests you, please check out the Slack Plus and you can get involved there. The second group is Enterprise Phil Plus. What this program is designed to do is how do we onboard extremely large data sets that may not be public? And how do we do it in a still transparent and open way to ensure that it's quality data? This has a little bit more of a disclosure form to get onboarded. So if you pull up this doc, you'll see the getting started form if you're interested in joining this. They don't have regular meetings. They do a lot of their communication on Slack. So if meetings aren't your jam, this might be the organization for you, but they're going to be doing really large data onboarding, kind of looking at the process that goes along with that. And then again, in 2023, we hope to have quite a few number of separate working groups that are working on really specific targeted problems, and we'll solicit a lot of the feedback from you when we start to kind of query you for 2023 thoughts. Next steps. So this is an action item for any new notaries that have signed up to receive a refresh on their data application. So even if you're an existing third round notary, you'll still need to redo this for a data application refresh. And what this disclosure form is, is essentially saying that you are not on a sanction list anywhere in the world for the US to do business, specifically the Filecoin Foundation to interact with and have transfers between. This is mandatory for our own legal reasons in the States. This form must be completed by December 20th. So if you have any complications or blockers that would prevent you from doing this by the 20th, please contact me early and I will get back to you and we'll see what we can help you with or unblock with. Essentially, this has been sent to every one of the GitHub applications. So that means in your notary application, as I said, welcome to the team, I sent you this link. So if you haven't seen it in your GitHub application, your acceptance, go back and check it. That'll be the last com on your application. And when you follow this, it will take you to an Airtable form where you'll enter the information. A couple of call outs on this form. Number one, you have to complete this with the full name. So if I was completing this, I wouldn't just put Kevin, I would put my full first last name. I know if you're from some regions, you might have a different operating name from your birth name. What you can do is in the disclosures on the very bottom of the form, say, hey, I go by Kevin, but my birth name was Jonathan. So if you do have two names, use the disclosures to list that. The second call out to make you aware of is that you must complete this for everyone in your organization that will be operating as a notary. So what this means is if they have access to the ledger and they will be communicating on Slack, or they will be signing data, they must sign this form too. If there's a notary organization that has individuals participating and acting as a notary on their behalf that have not completed this form, it may result in immediate removal of the program. So I've seen some applications come through already. Thank you very much. If you have two, three, four, five people within your organization will serve in this notary capacity, just make sure that they all fill out this form. So thank you for this. So again, just as a quick reminder, it can't just be your first name. It has to be your full name. If you happen to have two names that you go by, just put the second name in the disclosures and make sure that everybody within your organization that will be communicating as a notary and acting with that ledger signs this form to revoke the removal. I'm going to pause and see if you guys have any questions on the disclosure form.
I see a question in chat. I'm just going to raise it here for anybody watching on YouTube. It was, has anybody else received a fill? So great question. No, Tim, we haven't set the fill out. And essentially anybody who's wondering what that means, what the foundation will do is it will send one fill to verify the ledger address for every new notary or receive one fill on your ledger that you verify. We do this one to verify that the ledger is in fact controlled by you. You verify this amount. It won't be one. It will be some very specific number like 0.996243. Then you tell us what that fill was and we know, okay, you are the person who controls this specific ledger and address. And the second is it covers any gas transaction fees that you may have as your operating as a notary. That will probably go out in early January, given the holidays here in the States. So look for that to come either very late in the month or early in January. Thanks for asking that. All right. If you're new notary, you might be thinking, wow, how do I, I know what to do as far as like signing in, approving data cap allocations, communicating? What do I do if I'm stuck? How do I ask questions? How does this whole process work? We are going to be sending you a notary onboarding guide, essentially a checklist of, hey, follow these steps and take a look at like how to look at an application, what to look for in an application to know if it's quality how to push back in a respectful way and ask for additional information. How do you verify these processes to make sure that it all communicates well? We will be sending you docs and videos. We're gonna have them translated into Mandarin and we're gonna make it work at your own pace. So this means that if you wanna take an afternoon or share this with multiple people, and this stems from a lesson learned in the third round of elections where we hosted governance calls similar to the ones you're on and did the training live and then recorded it it made it really difficult for people that might not speak English as their primary language to kind of ask questions and follow up, as well as if somebody fell behind or didn't have it, they were constantly playing catch up. So if you're a new notary in your existing notary, we're going to share it with everybody. We will be providing you access to an onboarding documentation guide with videos, checklists, step by step to really help you get started and give you like a foot in the right direction. We had mentioned in Slack that this would be coming in the next two weeks. This has been a monumental election season, and that's not going to happen. So I will update this, and this will probably be coming to you around early mid-January as far as like, here's an onboarding guide that really covers all these steps. So again, this onboarding guide won't be coming next week. This will be coming in probably early January to help you out. And one of the last points to drive home is this is the last governance call of 2022. The next call will take place in 2023. What I'm gonna do is post in the private notaries channel once I add you all to it. And I'm gonna collect your feedback on times. A lot of the times that we're meeting are based off the times that we did this, you know, a year and a half ago. So this is a good opportunity to check in and say, hey, what times work well for you on this date to make sure that we're selecting a time and then seeing if we can make sure that we're aligning and being respectful of regional holidays. So again, look for that in the private notaries channel to come. All of the notaries will get your feedback and prioritize. Since this is the notary governance call, we'll prioritize this for you. And on future calls, I won't be talking nearly as much. This is kind of an outlier if this is your first time calling in. Normally we try to make these discussions about some of the proposals and issues that we're facing. Just with all the updates with the election, I think I just have a lot to say. So thank you for bearing with me. If you haven't followed it, there is a public calendar. I'm going to correct the dates. Thank you for letting me know about the time change. But if you follow that calendar, that'll tell you exactly when to show up. And then you'll see it. The reason we don't manually add everybody to the calendar is because every time you add somebody to a Google calendar, it will send a message to everybody who's on the recipient list. What we found is every time we were doing it, folks were like, I'm getting spammed every time you add somebody. So we shifted away of having people directly on the calendar and we just have this shared format. So just as a heads up, the link's there. It's also in the public repo if you need it. Happy to communicate if I can back you up. So one final time, I'm gonna share the link to this Airtable form. The reason I do this a second time is that if anybody joined the call after I shared this link, you won't be able to scroll back and chat and see it. So just as a friendly reminder, if you're a notary, a storage provider, an interested community member, 
This is a great way to show your participation. It goes a long way if you want to come back in the fifth round. We can say, hey, this person has actually been attending and really been a part of this program. And that adds to the weight when we look at these scores. And again, if you're a notary, this is a good way for you to mark down for that SLA. We're going to modify this form quite a bit going forward. This is the, the old one that we're sunsetting with this 2022. So you'll see lots of changes with it. So with that, I'm going to pause before we go on to the next completely different topics to see and to see if there's any questions I could answer for anybody before we move on to like the, the next portion of the call. All right, with that, I'm gonna introduce Simon if you haven't met him. Simon, since we have a lot of new faces on the call, maybe before you launch in, just a, a quick friendly hello and let everyone know who you are. Yeah, sure, uh, thanks, Kevin. Um, hi, everyone, my name is Simon Kim. I work on the Phil Plus team, mostly on the client tooling side. So if you have any sort of questions about um, clients or applications with LDNs, um, you can reach out to me or like Ke Kevin says, you can reach also out to some of our Slack channels. But like Kevin said, I'll be introducing one of the projects that we've been working really hard on. Um, Kevin, can I share my screen? <clears throat> All right, thank you. Uh, can everyone see? All right, so again, just hi everyone. I just wanna take a few minutes to share the new Phil Plus site that we've been really working really hard on. Um, we collaborated with Agency Undone, an amazing group of people who helped us launch this site in under a month. Uh, as you can see, the new website is called philplus.storage. And for the site, we wanted to make sure there were two main things that it provided. The first being to provide a central hub for anyone to learn about Phil Plus. So if you scroll down to the landing page, um, there are a few questions uh, and answers that will give you a brief explanation on getting started to learn about Phil Plus. You have, what is Phil Plus? How does Filecoin Plus work? Uh, what is data cap? Um, if you want to learn more, you can also go to the FAQ page at the very top. And this will bring you to a lot more just questions and answers related to Filecoin Plus. Um, what is a notary? How can I get in contact with storage providers? And this is just going to be a great way to get a high level overview of Phil Plus. And if you feel like you're ready or want to learn even more and going for a deeper dive, you can actually go into our documentation and go into the Filecoin and Filecoin Plus documentation. But going back to the landing page, um, the second being for data owners to apply for data cap, we want to provide a nice experience for anyone to apply and not have to really interface with GitHub. So there are some unique product features that we added, just a toggle here where you can go left and right, where it would actually, um, you can choose how much data cap you wanna apply for. And so if you don't wanna use a toggle, you can also just input the value as well uh, for PIB. And so if you put it, if you decided on the value that you want to put in, you can click into next, and this will bring you to the application. And so some of you may be already familiar with this, but just like in the GitHub repo, um, once you've answered all of the questions, and click send request, this will actually create the um, issue for you. But that's what we have. Please check it out and you can reach out to me if you have any questions. And yeah, again, just philplus.storage. Thank you. Simon, I agree with Alexandre. That's rocket ships, man. Is that live and folks can start using that today? Yeah, it is. 
one of the things that I noticed when I was clicking around there was there was a pretty <laughs> extensive like FAQ and document resource. Is that all up to date too? And if anybody wants to read more or share more about it, is that a good place to point them to? Yeah, it is. Uh, and I think, again, um, Kevin, you make a really good point. This was the main focus for this new site was for the data owners or clients that we like to call it. Um, this is just kind of focused on anyone who wants to learn about Phil Plus. Uh, you know, there's a lot of documentation out there and information out there, but I really felt like there wasn't one central location and that was the issue. So whenever someone came to us about asking to learn more about Phil Plus, either the documentation wasn't up to date or there was almost like three or four different places to go. And so it was just a lot of kind of searching here and there. And so now we just want to provide one, a central hub and just a good uh, kind of user experience to apply for data cap. Well, Simon, thanks for taking the call. Looks like you just covered everything so articulately, no questions, but I'm sure as we play around with that, we'll have lots of uh, thoughts and get back to you on that. So thanks again, man, we appreciate that, it's beautiful. So we have around 10 minutes left on the call. This is an opportunity for anybody who's on the line right now that wants to flag anything for the community. We try to save a few minutes of like unstructured time. And again, we'll talk in future calls about how to request topics for the agenda. So if you wanted specific time to address a specific issue, we can always bake it into an agenda, but we'll always save a few minutes for any thoughts or any kind of feedback or any input or anything that's on your mind or anything you'd like to discuss with the program. So with that, I'll mute. If anything you'd like to discuss, the floor is yours. I do see a question on the chat uh, from Irma from ND Labs. I uh, just don't want to ignore it, but again, I think the question was so everyone can see how this connects with notaries. Um, yeah, just like Alexandra just said, um, it's it's really more focused on the clients. It's more of the two main things is that it's an ed educational hub and that it's for clients to use this site to apply for data cap. Again, we kind of want to step away from GitHub just because the interface and the user experience is not so great. And we want to just be able to provide our clients with the best kind of um, user experience there is. Simon, there's one more question in chat. Yeah. Would you mind flagging that one too, please? Yes. Yeah, so this is for, um, so I see Laura from File Drive saying, could this tool work for both LDN and small location under 500 tip requests? Yep, as you can see, it goes all the way down to 32 gigabytes. Um, the, the um, it goes from 32 gigabytes to all the way to five PIBs. Um, just like the LDN applications, uh, we have that five PIB limit. So you can go within that range. I'll make one last call. Anybody have anything they would like to ask, flag, or discuss? All right, well, I guess with that, this is a good opportunity to say, hey, thank you so much for a great 2022. This has been a, a high growth year for the program and really turbulent times. I feel like everywhere we look, things are changing and not always in a positive way. So just wanted to say thank you, I'm trying to make this like a fostering community. I really appreciate that vibe from those of you that are feeling the same and want to contribute to something that lasts in a more advantageous way for everybody on the call. So again, thank you and welcome to all the new faces, new notaries that we have on the program. And again, we will publish the next notary governance call based off feedback in January. So there's no call on the 27th, 28th of December. Just as another friendly reminder, we will see everybody in the new year. So with that, thank you again. Welcome aboard and 
let's do great things together in 2023. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thanks.